you'll be aware that there are um, two sorts of measuring temperature. You can measure it on the Celsius scale or on the Fahrenheit scale. And this is a formula that can convert between the two. So for example, if we take 0 degrees centigrade or Celsius, um, you need to multiply that number by 1.8 and then add 32 to get the number in Fahrenheit. So some people would say, gosh, it's, it's freezing. It's 0 Celsius. And other people who perhaps use Fahrenheit would say the same thing. It's freezing. It's 32 degrees Fahrenheit. They're the same temperature, just measured in different ways. So there's a link between these two numbers. And, and this is the link here. Um, and we can put different numbers into this formula. We can put 10 degrees Celsius into the formula. And we will get times by 1.8, add 32, we will get 50 degrees Fahrenheit out. And again, those two things are the same temperature, just expressed in a different number. And we could put the number 20 into this formula, times it by 1.8, add 32, and we would get the answer 68 Fahrenheit. So what's going on here is that we've got um, this formula, this rule, which links pairs of numbers. Now, these numbers here are all temperatures in centigrade and, uh, sorry, Celsius. It, it might be convenient, rather than writing temperature in Celsius, to give them a label, a label C, perhaps. And it might be convenient to label these numbers here, the temperatures in Fahrenheit, as F. And what we can see from this sort of quick table that I've done is that C, the temperature in Celsius, that's just shorthand, remember, um, is what we call a variable. It can change. You can have weather which is 0 degrees Celsius, or it can be 10, or it can be 20, or it can be 30. It can be any number that you think of um, could go in here. So this this number, or this, this sort of lot of numbers, all these different numbers, um, could take the place of C. C is standing for one of these numbers. And... It can stand for any number that you choose. And therefore we call this a variable. And, and all that means is that the letter C can stand for any number that you choose. It can vary, it can change, it can be different numbers. And the same with this letter F here. Um, these are some examples of what F could be. F could stand for 68. If it was reasonably warm outside, you might say that F equals 68. If it was quite cold outside, you might say F equals 32. So this, this F, this temperature in Fahrenheit, can change, it can vary, and we call it a variable. So if I was going to write this in shorthand, I might write C times by 1.8 plus 32 equals F. And that's a little bit closer to how we normally would write a formula. Um, in fact, we would tend to write this one as F equals, so we, we put what we're trying to work out on the left hand side, and then we would write 1.8C, because we don't like to use multiplication symbol if we can avoid it, 1.8C plus 32. And this here is a formula And remember, it's just a way of expressing a rule um, or a link between two variables, two things that can change. Remember, I've called these variables because the, the temperature in Celsius can be any number you can think of, um, and it will have a corresponding temperature in Fahrenheit, but they are both variables. They're both things that can change. Let's have a look at a simple formula which you might come across in a maths question. So the formula we're going to start working with is P equals 2L plus 2W. You might be familiar with this as the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle. If you have a rectangle and you want to find its perimeter you have to add its length and its length again because we're adding up those two sides plus the width 
doubled. So it's two L's plus two W's, and that will give you the perimeter. But it actually doesn't matter where your formula comes from in these type of questions. All that's important is that you're given a formula. And what, what the question will normally say is, we'll give you a formula like this, and uh, if you're asked to substitute into a formula, you'll be asked to put some numbers in the place of the letters. So let's look at this as a typical question. Let's say that they tell you that L equals 4 and W equals 3 and they ask you to find the value of P. So what do we do? Well, we have to start with our formula like that. And we have to understand that substituting means taking this letter here, this L, and replacing it with the number that we are given. So we're told up here, look, that the letter L equals 4. That means any time we see the letter L, we can replace it with the number 4, because they are equal, they are the same thing. So in here, where it says 2 times L and 2 times W, I'm just putting an extra step in there, I can replace that L with a 4. Just look there, just read it one more time. L equals 4. If I see L, I can replace it with 4 because they are equal, they are the same thing. So here I have 2 times, I'm going to replace that, substitute the L for a 4, and then I'm going to do the same with the W, the W equals 3. Now it's just a matter of using the order of operations, I've got to get this right, so we're going to do the 2 times 4, and we're going to do the 2 times 3, and add them together, which gives the answer 14. Here's another typical sort of question. Let's imagine that you are given the formula y equals 4x plus c, and you're told that the value of x is 7.5, the value of c is 5.4, and you're asked to work out the value of y. So what do we do? Well, I'm going to write out the formula to show that's where I'm starting. I'm going to write out with a times in it, just to be absolutely clear what I'm doing. And then I'm going to replace that x with the x I was given. So I have to look right back up to the question and say, what is my value of x? x is equal to 7.5, so that means I can substitute that x that you see there, for a 7.5. And this C here, this can be replaced, because I know what it's equal to. It's equal to 5.4, so that means if I see the letter C, I know that it's going to stand for 5.4. OK, now this time, I've got 4 times 7.5 plus 5.4, and you can just do that on your calculator or if you need to you can do 4 lots of 7.5 add it up and then add on the 5.4 you'll get 35.4 let's have a look now at a slightly more complicated formula the one I've chosen is one which is quite familiar in mathematics it's pi r squared. It's the area of a circle. Remember, with a circle, the radius is the distance from the centre to the circumference. So, I've been given this formula, and let's imagine that the question tells you that r equals 7, and we've got to work out a. How do I do this? Well, I'll write out the formula that we were given at the top there. And then I'm just going to write out what pi r squared means. And it means pi times radius times radius. Now pi is just a number, 
You can find it on your calculator normally by pressing shift and then one of the buttons at the bottom. Um, but you are welcome to use 3.142, 3.14 instead if you prefer. I'm going to proceed using the pi button on my calculator. Now remember what we're doing here is we are working out the value of A and this formula tells us that we've got some R's still left in it. We need to replace those R's with a number and that information is given in the question. So once again we're replacing that R and that R with its number and my calculator gives me the answer 49 pi at that point. That's because my calculator is doing what's known as giving my answer in terms of pi. It's multiplying the sevens together to make 49 and then it's treating pi like a letter um, so much like you might write 3a or 5b it's giving us 49 pi. That's perhaps not the world's most sort of um, enlightening answer for some people they prefer to have a decimal so you can always um, press a button on your calculator and it, it varies but often it's marked with an S D um, and you will get a number like that which I've rounded to two decimal places okay I'm going to just look at one more example which is this one you're given a formula t equals x squared minus 3y and you're told that x equals 4 and y equals minus 2 it is a favourite of examiners to combine this type of question with negative numbers so you do need to be able to put them in on your calculator and also um, do them in your head or on a piece of paper um, there is a video on our YouTube channel of how to avoid negative number mistakes in algebra um, so you can check that out the basic sort of thing to remember with negative numbers putting them on your calculator is just to always put a little pair of brackets around them we're going to go ahead and do this without a calculator though so it asks us to work out T how do we do this? well as always we need to start with our formula that we were given I'm going to write it out using multiplication symbols just so you can see what's going on and then I'm going to do the substitution I'm going to replace that x with a 4 I'm going to replace that x with a 4 I'm going to replace that y with a minus 2 and once again we have to use our order of operations so multiplying comes before any subtraction so we do that one which makes 16 and we do that one which makes minus 6 and there's a subtraction in between notice this if you're subtracting a negative number the same as adding and again we have a video on negative numbers how to add how to subtract them on our channel so you end up with 16 take away negative 6 that take away a negative is the same as adding 6 and you end up with the answer 22 so that is how to substitute into a formula um, I have some questions here for you to have a go at if you pause the video now I will do the answers and get back to you Okay, first question we had to do 4x plus y and we had to have x equals 2 and y equals 5 and x stood for 2 and y stood for 5 so we get 8 plus 5 which is whoops, 13 For answer number 2 you needed to do a times b divided by 10 
A was 5, B was 7, so we had 5 times 7 divided by 10. That's 35 divided by 10, which is 3.5. For question 3, we had K equals 3 lots of A plus B squared. Now, I'm going to write that out just a bit simpler, just so I remember what to do with my b squared. And then I'm going to substitute in the numbers, and then I have to really try to remember my rules for the order of operations. Do whatever's in the brackets first, and we have to follow the normal rules inside there, so I have to do the 3 times 3 first. Then I have to do the addition next, still inside the brackets. And now I can multiply the 3 by the bracket, 3 times 7, which is 21. And question 4, we had to do r equals 2p plus q over m. So I'm going to be replacing that P with a 6, so it's 2 times 6. Replace that Q with a minus 4. And replace that M with a 0 0.5. That's going to end up with 12 plus negative 4 over 0 0.5. 12 plus negative 4 is 8. And 8 divided by 0 0.5 is the same as 16 over 1. I just doubled the numbers in the fraction there to get an equivalent fraction, which is just 16.